Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, June 11th, 2020, and today we're going to be talking about a very important thing that just recently happened. The Republican National Committee voted to keep their 2016 platform in its entirety for the 2020 election. Essentially, they're taking their platform from 2016, this 66-page long PDF, uh, and reusing it for the 2020 election. So nothing really changes in terms of the overall stances from the Republican Party. I don't think that's too much of a surprise, but I do think that it is very interesting that uh, the overall platform itself um, is not necessarily going to be geared towards a changing electorate. When we take a look at the 2016 presidential election map, sure, Donald Trump defeated Hillary Clinton uh, in a number of states that were I guess, really surprising. And when we take a look at that, that was not necessarily a combination of just his party platform, but his campaign tactics, Hillary Clinton being a bad candidate. But times are different. Four years after, Donald Trump's approval rating is not doing too well right now. And the national polling data indicates that Joe Biden has a much more commanding lead than what Hillary Clinton had on Election Day. Now, I know we're five months away, but I will say that the fact that the Republican uh, Party not changing their platform will not benefit them whatsoever. Uh, the 2008 party platform for the Democratic Party definitely needed adjustments in 2012, and they did change it. Um, despite winning with 365 electoral votes, Barack Obama's party did change their platform in 2012, uh, even though it was very likely they could have won with just the same platform again. So what does this mean for Donald Trump? Well, number one, I think that it is important to note that the uh, Republican campaign really does need to adjust. As we take a look across the United States in just a couple of decades, white people will be in the minority. Now, uh, I do think that there should be preliminary steps taken in terms of shifting the overall Republican Party's uh, viewpoints. But obviously, with a more, uh, I guess, increasingly diverse America, that will always benefit the Democratic Party unless something fundamentally changes within the Republican Party. The Democratic Party will always be the go-to for minority voters as we move through the next couple of probably decades, to be completely honest. That just comes as a result of, uh, number one, their foundation. The Democratic Party um, in modern election history, we're not going to necessarily go back uh, past probably before the 90s, to be completely honest. The Democratic Party has had a very uh, substantial hold on every single minority group. Now, when we take a look at the Republican Party, a lot of their voters are white voters. Keep in mind, most of America is white, and most of the electorate, uh, obviously, in terms of registered voters, is also white, which is exactly why the Republican Party has very strong holds in some states that are predominantly white versus states that have a very large minority population. Uh, there are some exceptions for states such as Mississippi or Louisiana or Arkansas, uh, but then you take a look around the United States, there's a number of states that have a very large minority population that do uh, either are, are rated solid Democrat or toss ups. So when we take a look at the uh, you know 2016 party platform, there's a lot to go ahead and uh, dive into. There isn't too many things that need to be noted, but I do remember that in 2019, uh, you know, Jared Kushner had said that he wanted some fundamental changes in some of the wording in terms of the Republican Party's platform for 2020. It looks like the RNC has decided not to change any of that. Um, one major thing is that the, uh, you know, the RNC pretty much put out a platform in here that um, I don't know exactly what page it's on, but if you go ahead, I'll probably put the link to this in the uh, description so you can actually, if you want to read the whole 66-page document itself. But I'm just going to highlight a couple of the things that he wanted to mention. Uh, number one, it wasn't actually super important, but um, I will say that uh, it was something in order to resonate more with African-American voters. It was the uh, word change from... I think and uh, education empowerment back to school choice um, because school choice was more recognizable am across America in general. Um, that was something that he wanted to change. Another thing was um, I remember that he had also mentioned, I think this was actually recently brought up because of the fact that they didn't necessarily change anything. Uh, they just readopted the party platform, which I really think is just number one, a combination of yes, they do stand for the same things and rewriting it may have been a waste of time, but I don't necessarily think the fact that they are running with the strictly exact same platform as their 2016 platform can necessarily work with voters that have been turned off by Donald Trump's 2016 promises, which means that in states that they didn't necessarily win in 2016, what makes these uh, new or previously Democratic states want to go to Donald Trump? If nothing is changing within his campaign, it's going to be very difficult for them to see any other reason to vote for him. If they weren't voting for him in 2016 and nothing's changed since 2016, what would make it seem as if they would vote for him now? In fact, he's off uh, to a worse point than where he was in 2016. But another thing was the fact that this platform had necessarily um, 
endorsed conversion therapy for LGBT children and uh, pretty much said that they stand by a parent's decision to have their child in therapy. And that was something that Jared Kushner also wanted to change because a number of uh, Republicans that were in the LGBT community as well did not necessarily like that. The wording of it just seemed very, very uh, much like a subtle endorsement of uh, putting children through conversion therapy. And I think that's something that uh, was supposed to be changed in this platform itself. So um, another small headline that comes with this is the fact that the uh, RNC will still have their nomination process in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, because of a contract issue, but they will likely have an overall convention convention in Florida later on where Donald Trump will speak uh, and all the delegates will actually convene compared to uh, this uh, North Carolina one where only six delegates are sent from the state. So really doesn't matter for the North Carolina thing. That's just something to note because I remember there was some discussion about where the RNC would be held. Um, I will try to make a video discussing the impact of the RNC's location or the, Repu the Democratic uh, Party's location on a state. But if it's a virtual uh, event, I really don't think there will be any drastic implication um, in favor of the Democratic Party or against them in terms of the 2020 landscape. But I think that the Republican Party really should, uh, you know, change some things in terms of their platform. Um, a lot of the issues that were discussed in 2016 aren't relevant today. Um, pretty notably, the, the absence of the Republican response to the Black Lives Matter movement in a whole. The fact that Mitt Romney is practically the only, the only Republican senator who has come out in full support of the movement itself is going to alienate that 8% of black voters that uh, Donald Trump got in 2016. Now, uh, Donald Trump may have increased from Mitt Romney's margin of 6% of the black vote nationwide, but um, again, 8% is not something to gloat. And when you take a look at the overall electoral landscape, the Black Lives Matter movement will directly impact uh, black citizens in this country. And they will turn out in numbers that the American uh, people probably haven't seen since either Obama or never before. If they do, um, if minority turnout passes uh, the numbers that they were in 2008, 65% for black voters. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, white voters actually turn out pretty substantially. There are some states, predominantly Republican states, that near 70% uh, turnout. A number of states like Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania, they have a very large turnout number, which is very surprising to me. I really thought that a lot of these states were just 50%, but I think that it is really good for the American electorate to see um you know, very large turnout numbers. And I think based off the 2018 midterm elections and the way that they went, I think that the Democratic Party is probably going to continue to ride off this uh, wave into an election victory. If we're talking about the RNC platform itself, again, this could very well resonate with a lot of the same voters that voted for Trump in 2016. But the problem is, if any of them are looking for some type of variation in terms of Donald Trump's platform in 2016 versus now, they're not going to find it. Um, and that comes with a changing America. COVID-19 is a number one issue. Um, and so is Black Lives Matter. And what else 2020 throws at us as we proceed through the next five months up until the election uh, will probably be the front of the 2020 election campaign. And the fact that the Republican Party itself does not want to, voted not to change anything, really isn't a good sign for them in terms of their re-election chances. Um, uh, so, you know, it's as it says here, instead of building a new platform for 2020, which I really think they should have done, they really should have included a lot more discussing um, the Black Lives Matter movement itself or just uh, racial inequality or police brutality, something that would acknowledge what's going on nationwide rather than, you know, using the old 2016 platform. And this is just a number of things that's piling on to Donald Trump's re-election bid that makes it very difficult for him to win re-election at this point. He's adding on all of the baggage that the Democratic Party used against him in 2016, not changing anything, meaning he's not expanding his electorate. Sure, he could win with the states again, as he did win in 2016. That makes sense. But I will say that he also narrowly won. And if he's not increasing, he can only go down from there. And as we've taken a look at all of the approval numbers, all of the polling numbers, Hillary Clinton narrowly led in Michigan and Pennsylvania on Election Day. But Joe Biden is doing a lot better on the national polling data. Hillary Clinton led by around three percent. She ended up winning by two. Joe Biden leads by eight percent nationwide. If Joe Biden only needs to narrowly outperform Hillary Clinton, he's already there and more. So, um, you know, Donald Trump pretty much 
uh, he won't be able to expand on any voters unless they say, hmm, I agreed with the Democratic Party's platform in 2016. Now I agree with the same Republican platform that I voted against four years prior. It really doesn't make sense. I really think, um, though not many people do read the Republican uh, platform itself, this definitely will be seen in campaign ads. They will say Donald Trump is using the same type of campaign tactics, same type of campaign rhetoric, the same campaign promises um, in 2020, the same ones he made in 2016, whether that dies down to uh, or goes down to a broken promises type ad or, um, you know, a hateful rhetoric type ad using the same things that he said, because they very well could, because nothing Donald Trump said in 2016 can't be used against him now. If we've seen anything, they will take clips from 2000, the 90s, the 80s against Donald Trump um, or any other really political candidate, because the history is there. It's documented. And uh, everything that they've said is public information and uh, using that against them seems to be one of the surefire ways to uh, decrease approval rating or uh, win an election, which makes sense. It's politics. That's how it goes. But I do think that it is a very interesting but overall wrong move for the Republican Party to completely adapt their 2016 party platform. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Please consider joining on my YouTube channel as a member and I will see you all later today.